Alright, what's going on guys? Lies of P has been one of my most anticipated games of the last year, and I bought the deluxe edition in order to get early access, and I've been playing the game almost non-stop since it went live two days ago, and I have a lot of thoughts to share about this game, but overall I've been having a fantastic time with it. The game is very good. The setting is captivating. I'm constantly intrigued by not only the story, but the character quest lines we're finding throughout the world. There's a lot to love here, and for the most part I do love it, but as I've been playing, there are some very glaring issues issues that have come to light that I just feel I have to talk about. On one hand to make you the consumer aware so that you can expect these shortcomings and know how to adapt to them to make your gameplay experience better and to also provide feedback to the developers so that they either update these things or know that Souls fans are finding issues with them for their next installment. But before we get into that, if you're new around here, we cover all things Soulsborne, Souls-like, and from software. So if you want to stay up to date on these games or enjoy the lore or general discussion, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And now let's get into it. Before I dive into what the big problem with this game is, let me preface the discussion with a few things. Lies of P was created by the studio NeoWiz, a South Korean developer, and one thing to keep in mind is that this is their first attempt at the Souls-like genre, and for their first try, it is a very good one. So even though I'm going to be frequently comparing this game to games like Bloodborne or Elden Ring, it is important to remember that they don't have the decades of experience that From Software does. In addition to that, in order to understand my criticisms with the game, we need to also understand understand the intended way to play it. The inspiration for Lies of P's combat is Bloodborne, and it draws many of its core elements from that game. We have a sidestep dodge while locked onto a target, charged R2 heavy attacks, a rally system to regain health after blocking an attack, and get heavy damage from a visceral attack. And the one key purpose behind all these elements in Bloodborne was to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe in combat, and Lies of P appears to encourage that same playstyle. As I mentioned, one of the main combat features is the rally system, where you can block an attack in order to take chip damage, and then experience a brief window where you can attack the target in order to get that health back. There are also fable arts, special weapon attacks, that can allow you to perform various skills and use a charge of these mini bars beneath your stamina gauge, and these are also charged through attacking targets. We then have your primary healing items, which when fully consumed, allow you to re-earn another one once again by attacking enemies. And then finally we have the Sekiro style parry, which can fully deflect attacks, making you take no damage and slightly staggering the enemy. These are all core combat mechanics that you absolutely have to engage with, and all of these encourage an aggressive playstyle. Which brings me to my first criticism. General player speed. It's no secret that the player moves incredibly slow in Lies of P, and this can very much be felt in combat. When you're trying to counter an enemy or dodge an attack, the player cannot perform actions as fast as the enemies can, which often means that if you get caught by one attack from an enemy, you get pulled into a combo of other attacks without enough recovery time to get yourself out of it. And when some of these major enemies and bosses have anywhere from 5 to 10 sequence long combos, it makes the player feel as though they don't have the tools to compete, which makes the game in turn feel clunky, slow, and unbalanced. Now notice how I said it makes the player feel as though they don't have the tools. In Lies of P, at least for the first half of the game, they quite literally don't. After you get to the scrapped Watchman boss and finally defeat him, you'll unlock a new feature called the P Organ. And essentially what this is, is the player's skill tree. Here you can upgrade your character and unlock new skills. You have things like upgrading the amount of healing items you have, charges to your fable arts, increased time of enemy stagger, and one that upgrades your dodge. Now in order to unlock these new skills, you have to go into the menu and unlock other upgrades, and these come in many forms, but some of the upgrades that can be found in this submenu are very important to making the game feel smooth, such as increased stamina recovery time while attacking enemies. And to purchase these upgrades it requires a currency called Quartz. I'm not entirely sure all the places you can get Quartz, but I've noticed them dropping from mini bosses, and I believe in a chest or two. And after defeating the third boss I had two of these Quartz, and in order to unlock one actual skill it takes two Quartz. And the skill I immediately unlocked was the ability to chain two dodges together. Now the wording when you unlock the ability is that it allows you to perform another dodge in the middle of a first dodge animation, but this isn't quite true. The animation for the first dodge still finishes before you're able to do the second one. What this actually does is remove artificial downtime that's present before you have the skill after a first dodge before you can dodge again. In a game like Bloodborne, that's a feature that the player has immediately when starting the game. Now as I progressed further through the game and beat more bosses, thereby unlocking more courts, I found that there is yet another 
another dodge upgrade further down the skill tree. And what this one allowed me to do was roll out of being stuck on the ground. In this clip here, you can see that my player gets smashed to the ground, and during the animation of getting up, I don't have the ability to control my character, and I'm stuck in a combo of hit after hit until I died. And the ability to roll from the ground is yet another basic movement ability in the Soul series and Bloodborne. Now the skill tree continues for a while, and I've only seen the first two movement upgrades. Now by assuming that this trend continues, by the time we unlock all the upgrades and get to the end of the game, the vast majority of the clunky feeling is going to be gone. So the problem here is that basic movement features that the player needs in order to survive the game are locked behind the skill tree. And since Quartz is so rare and hard to find, if a player does not immediately invest in the dodge upgrades, they are at a significant disadvantage, unable to perform movements that are present from the very beginning in many of the game's competitors. So it creates an unnecessary sense that the game is clunky, poorly balanced, and feels like molasses, when in reality the player simply hasn't unlocked that upgrade yet. And the thing is, I actually want the other upgrades in the skill tree, but I feel that if I don't unlock the dodge upgrades, the game is going to be much harder than it needs to be. Now what makes this much worse, is that the player has zero poise whatsoever. Every single hit, no matter from what enemy, will stagger you out of a move. Even a fully charged fable art can be interrupted from the most basic of attacks. And what this does is create more downtime in combat where well, the player cannot input any controls to the character if they don't have the right upgrade. And there's one more thing that goes along with this. Parry timing feels way too strict in this game. And oftentimes, many of the enemies that have a lot of the long combos lack a sense of rhythm in their movements. What made the parrying in Sekiro so satisfying was that everything had a distinct beat to it. You could parry bosses with a blindfold on simply by the sound alone because you could recognize the cadence. But in Sekiro, the deflect was the primary means of avoiding damage. Now, I don't yet know if there's a skill that upgrades the parry, but at least for the early game, the parry, like the dodge, feels underpowered and underdeveloped. Many attacks hit the player multiple times, so even if you parry the first hit, you'll still get hit again, even during the same animation. And this once again contributes to the game feeling clunky. So here's the issue. Lies of P has a combat system that encourages aggressiveness. The game wants you to stay in the pocket and use all of the abilities at your disposal. But the problem here is that all of these abilities feel disconnected from one another, separated by a stiffness that's only removed through upgrades that are locked behind the skill tree. Basic features that are intuitive to players that have played Souls likes before, that if were present from the beginning, would not make the game too easy, but would instead make it more smooth and thereby more fun. And I say all that because this game is a gem. The more I get into it, and the more I unlock, it feels better and better. And had I these abilities from the beginning, it would have alleviated so much frustration that initially felt out of my control as the player. Anyways though guys, that is going to pretty much do it for the video today. I really am having a blast with Lies of P, and I do feel it's one of the best Souls likes we've ever gotten. But I just felt like I had to come on here and talk about these issues, to hopefully provide some feedback, as well as awareness to players that are going to be jumping into this game for the first time, when it officially releases on Tuesday. But if you're playing through Lies of P, let me know how you're liking it so far, and if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new around here. But with all that, I will catch you in the next one.